you focus a lot on efficiency performance. Let's just quickly talk about cost because when I was going through it, it's almost 20% cloud cost reduction and organizations are becoming very, very cost sensitive in this economy. Uh, infrastructure spend is under the microscope at almost every organization. Just walk me through, you did touch upon a lot of factors, but just walk me through the mechanics of how uh, when we put Platform Prime with Optimizer Hub, it delivers those savings without, as you rightly mentioned, any code changes. What we're doing is we're basically getting the most we possibly can out of a single server. So you have to have less servers overall. And there's three ways that we deliver that. So the first way we deliver that is that um, through our positive garbage collectors and through our other technology, we've basically removed 95% of the stalls, freezes, and jitters, the latency outliers that people used to have to reserve capacity that would stay idle most of the time, but in, you know, point zero zero one percent of the calls would actually show up right so now that that this jvm can meet your slas can give good performance even when you press it harder we can now start raising our utilization of these these jvms instead of only using 35 percent of the cpu now we can use 50 percent 60 percent before we start scaling out other machines that means more transactions through one server right and less servers overall so similarly our compiler our JIT compiler that does this optimization not only does it have this facility to offload all that to Optimizer Hub? But it also is the world's fastest JIT compiler. And it produces code that runs 40% faster, 40 to 50% faster than OpenJDK. So now with each transaction taking less CPU, that means again, I can now run more transactions through one server. I need less servers overall. And then finally, the best way to save money on a server is to turn it off, right? So if you weren't able to, if you were provisioning for always on before, now with the optimizer hub technology, I can start actually scaling based on my load, doing that more aggressively with more confidence. Those three things put together add up to, on average, uh, you know, a 20% savings uh, for our customers on their cloud cost bill, while at the same time, you're improving the customer experience because you're getting better performance, lower latencies, and less pauses and jitters and freezes, you know, associated with just regular running or with starting up new JVMs. We are seeing a lot of focus on FinOps and cloud cost optimization these days. How does Optimizer Hub integrate with existing cloud monitoring and optimization tool that enterprises already have in place? Yeah, we're very uh, we're very into FinOps. Uh, I'm a FinOps certified practitioner myself, um, and so there's there's the FinOps world has been really um, focused on observability. They've been focused on how do we observe costs, how do we track costs, how do we how do we um, how do we back charge costs to individual uh, individual departments? How do we recognize anomalies? And then it's been looking at like, okay, what are our cost savings opportunities when you get to the optimized phase of the FinOps framework, right? What are our cost saving op opportunities? But most of what teams that are doing FinOps are doing, there's this low hanging fruit, which is super valuable, which is like, hey, let's turn these things off. Let's run these things on spot instances. Let's put this data over here in, in this other tier, right? Those things are super valuable. And if you haven't done anything at all, they can save you a ton of money. They're absolutely the first things you can do, but then you hit a wall, right? What do you do next? And what do you do next comes down to one of two things, right? First, you can re-architect, right? Um, but a lot of people who have been driven to the cloud have been driven by these, you know, data center closure, you know, goals of we must close this data center by X date. And what they've done is they've just lifted and shifted old monolith three tier applications over onto the cloud, right? They didn't have time to re-architect those things. They still don't have time to re-architect those things. Those things are running on the cloud where compute costs more than their local data centers, right? And they're burning through money, right? So these people, they need a way to get some relief, some cost relief on these applications without having to go and refactor them for cloud native, right? So, so we offer people who, who have 
brought their legacy three-tier monolith apps onto the cloud, a way to recoup some of that additional cloud costs that they, that they, that they incurred by moving from on-prem to cloud. And then when you do re-architect, you hit another wall where you get to a point where you're like, you know, okay, I'm already cloud native, you know, I'm auto scaling. How am I going to get some additional savings? Right. And by there, they don't have in the code by there, they've run out of things they can really do in the code easily that they can do in the code in order to deliver additional savings. And these people all have huge backlogs of features they actually have to deliver, right? They've got huge time to market pressure on delivering the value. And so there, that's another place where, hey, even if you've done everything right and you think this is as fast as it's going to get, or hey, these these outlet these these GC pauses these these out latency outliers are just a fact of life and we have to live with them. Then you come in and you just swap out the JVM and you're like, oh my god, there's another twenty percent code speed. There's another complete reduction, complete elimination of my P ninety nine outliers, P ninety nine point nine nine outliers. So you know we are complementary, but yeah, um, probably the biggest com- uh, challenge we face is people never think of the JVM as a FinOps tool. People never think of the JVM as a cloud cost optimization tool. And we're trying to yell it from the mountains that yes, you switch out the JVM, you can, you can reduce that cloud cost significantly um, without having to do the replat, the rehost, the, the refactoring, re-architecting, and so forth that you would typically have to do in order to get those those savings. What's the typical ROI timeline enterprises are seeing when they deploy platform prime with optimizer hub are we talking about years weeks months quarters days or hours typically you know we'll go in and you know a migration project will take like a couple of weeks basically for us to and this is not like a couple of weeks where the team is going to only be working on that. This is a couple of weeks where we kind of iterate, you know, you got to get, get your test environment set up and so forth. So we get that through, but then the ROI is, is, is immediate afterwards because, uh, and the ROI really is the more you deploy to it, the more you save. Right. Um, but you know, if you look at it, you know, when you're, you're talking about a paid product, paying for something that was free before, right? Um, you know, how does that make sense? And we like to say that that we are more cost effective than free because at the end of the day, the gains that the, the savings you're going to get from compute costs that we're going to save you, not to mention developer costs from, you know, save developer time that your developers don't have to be worrying with performance issues because you've pushed those performance issues down to the platform to solve and so forth, right? Those savings are going to completely outstrip whatever you're paying as well in licensing. So, um, so yeah, even, even we, we love going up against free because we kick free's butt when it comes to cost savings for the customer. 